Welcome back, everybody, to today's page, the podcast. I'm your host, Paige Cornblue, and you know, here we tackle news, sports, travel, lifestyle, politics, parenting, the works. Uh, we highlight fascinating people, interesting places, inspiring and empowering, th empowering thoughts and ideas. But today we have a few of those things rolled into one: uh, sports and inspiration, first and foremost, in my book, anyway, on my page. Anyway, so you know, when we talk about golfing greats, we know the names Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, Greg Norman, Ben Hogan, Gary Player, Sam Sneed, Arnold Palmer, Phil Mickelson, the list goes on and on and on, right? They have the stats, the records, the wins, the dedication, and of course, the stories. But today we take you to the greens and get to know, in my opinion, another golfing great whose story and journey will no doubt inspire you and probably make you stop and think quite a bit. It sure has for me. So 54 year old, hope I'm right. Club professional Brian Morris joins me. Brian, welcome. Hey, what's up Paige? How you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Good. And we also have his cousin, fellow pro golfer out of Bermuda, Michael Sims. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So Michael was Brian's caddy. We'll get to all those details in just a minute. Uh, Brian recent no, friend. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't have a caddy for me. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Cross yeah. that off the list. <laughs> yeah, we played. We, we played in the same group, bitch. Okay. Well, shoot. Mike was Mike was a bully. Like his 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 the top Bermuda golfer by far. I'm second. <laughs> <laughs> but not in this one. No, I think right, right Mike. I think in this one might be uh, swapped here, but uh, I think okay. Brian might have taken the show in the last one. Shoot, <laughs> baby. I think so, <laughs> and we want to talk about all of that. Um, what we're discussing, everybody, in case you haven't heard this story, and uh, many of you have, I'm sure. Brian Lee, Brian recently made his PGA Tour debut uh, at the Butterfield Bermuda Championship, and he joined the field at the Port Royal Golf Course on a sponsor exemption, courtesy of Bermuda Bank Butterfield, because this head pro of Bermuda's Ocean View Golf Course, uh, among other things in his career, he's currently battling stage four cancer. And um, Michael was right there on the greens with him. Talk about that moment, Brian, that opportunity. Um, I'm sure you were feeling all the feels. Yeah, it was an incredible pitch. Um, Obviously, it's the, the, the highlight of my life, uh, playing at a PGA Tour event. Um, to top it off, um, playing with Michael, who I've admired him and his golf game like forever, since when he was a junior. I know he doesn't <clears throat> look like he's younger than me, but he is. <laughs> and I, I, I watched his whole junior career. I watched him when he went to Rhode Island. I always followed him. We don't have to speak every single day, but he he always has been had a special place in my heart. So to be able to play with with him was was really cool, you know. Um, and th just the the battle I'm going through. So you need good things to happen, man, because um, you you get a lot of bear breaks, you got a lot of bear calls, and this was actually. Um, such a wicked call where they said, hey, I'm, I'm playing. And then to find out Michael called me, I believe it was on Tuesday and said that we're, we're prayer together, like a hey, icing on the cake, as they would say. Yeah. <laughs> and Michael, I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, I think because there's recent stories where you've been caddying, but this one you were walking <laughs> along. So, geez, you're going to kill me later. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, to be able to walk alongside, and I know um, when Michael wrote about this a little bit after, he said that. He said, I am humbled and honored to get to enjoy the walk with you this week. Mike, talk a little bit about that and the experience for you on your end. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've played in a lot of golf events in my life. Um, and uh, this was by far the most special if every event could be like this, I would play golf <laughs> in competition like that still. Um, you know, we got paired with PJ Tour Pro Sahith. Um, Sahith, I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, 
but the group was just magical. Um, it's hard to put into words just because obviously we all know what Brian's going through. You know, I mean, the second I found out that he got an invitation into this thing, I called him up and he goes, man, news travels fast for some, for something that it's not supposed to be out there yet. <laughs> um, and we must, I think we laugh for about 15 minutes just talking about it. Um, and the walk, I mean, from the first tee shot, the warming up, the first tee shot, the practice round we played, everything that happened that week was just, I mean, that's exactly what the game is, right? I mean, it's about enjoying everybody's company, linking souls um, and having a good laugh and, and being competitive, you know? And the thing that stands out to me is, is Brian's tenacity, his desire to always go past whatever it is. I mean, they sit there and they say one thing and he's like, all right, cool. And he just charges through it. So like, big inspiration for me and then i get to walk and and be inside the ropes with it <laughs> i mean you can't even put it into words you know i mean we were chuckling at the end at the as we were walking down the first tee i mean you were floating <laughs> <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> you know? brian um so many times you know uh, um, unfortunately, as many of us know, who have a loved one who's fighting cancer who, or, or who are experiencing themselves, it metastasizes. It, it, it jumps through our body. And in your case, it has. And most people rest. <laughs> they, re, they are undergoing treatment like you are. And uh, they take that moment to sit back, relax. And you're, you know, in this, this case, you've done quite the opposite. You were out there and uh, living out your dream on the greens. Um, how was that for you? You know, you've talked, I'm sure, about it being therapy. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. This battling every day through through pain and all types of other ailments, um, it it drains you. It it really does. Um, so I do I do find time to rest. Like I'm due for a rest day tomorrow, so that's what what I'm gonna do. Um, mentally, the 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 battles up here, Paige. Um, physical you could you could get through that um at, at times but it, it's a mental battle it's a lot of things that I can't do um that I used to do and and that gets that gets to you but um through golf um I've still maintained like that lifestyle I I still get to see my friends um I still get to go to, to work and and see the members and and see the guys at at work um my wife still gets to pick out my outfits for me. Like, you know. <laughs> Thanks, goodness. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> she swears I'm colorblind, but whatever. <laughs> but it's, um, it, it's just golf just, just takes me away and makes like this journey some type of, I guess it's some type of normalcy, you know what I mean? It's um, without it, I don't know what, what, what I do like you. I refuse to just sit there and, and lay on the couch and say, I need rest. I know I need it. My body knows when I need it and I know when to take it. So like I said, tomorrow's a rest day. I'm going to take it. So I'll, I'll cool out and I'll gain strength for the next three or four days. Then I'll take a, take a break next week. But it's, um, it's awesome. It's such a, such a cool place to be. Like I said, 90% of this battle page um, is, is mental. It's a mental battle. Like I can't run anymore obviously I had to take a car I would have loved to have been able to walk down the freeways but I can't but I was still on the freeways you know that's that that's kind of you know makes it all okay there's so many challenges on those freeways anyway um you both know all of those those challenges with this game and in this career whether you're managing a pro shop or you're playing the game competitively um Mike watching him out there and kind of tackling the challenges uh, that weekend. Uh, you know the circuit well, um, and all that was going on all around. Um, take us through a little bit of kind of what was going in your mind watching Brian play. Man, <laughs> there's so many different things. Um, I stunk it up too, babe. <laughs> Don't be afraid to say that, Mike. <laughs> well, the, the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that I, I also saw you know, was community. I mean, you know, you say you're, 
you go through those ups and downs mentally and things like that, you by far had the biggest crowd that has ever followed anybody at that tournament in three years. Sure. You know, that's, that's what that, that it's the community. It's bringing people together. And that's what you've always done is you've always brought people together through your storytelling, through your laughter, through, I mean, just you, um, um you include, you know what I mean? And it was so special for me to get to watch like just the amount of people that were there and they could care less how, how much you, you sucked. Yeah, for oh. real. <laughs> These two go way back, everybody. Way back. Um, if we don't throw a jab at one another, we ain't doing it right. Yeah, for um, real, yeah. <laughs> but more importantly, and, and you know, you said that to me as you're, man, I just want to play better. And, and I'm sitting there going, how about we just enjoy this moment? And, you know, like yeah. you're the relief, like you see on your face when like those little moments like you and I yeah. had out there. That, that um, changed stuff for me tremendously, to be honest with you. When you said, look, let's just have some fun, man. That, yeah. You know, kind of brought it all back into perspective. Yeah. One shot at a time. And you just hit a good one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, to be able to share that experience and see the community get behind it and behind you. Um, you know, when you are going through those, those moments, I mean, you also got to look back and go, God, I have all this support too. You know what I mean? Like that was the thing, like the support, the, yeah. the energy that was being fed. I mean, people yelling your name. I mean, yeah. I felt sorry for Sahith a couple of times because everybody, you know, we got non-golfers out there and Bermudians yeah. are not quiet. <laughs> no. That poor guy, but he never complained <laughs> once. And he was like, no. he was all into it. You know what I mean? For you, yeah. for you. I mean, you're almost making another guy that, you don't even know cry at the end of 36 holes yeah because he's like he you know he felt like family yeah for real yeah you know and i think that's like the the coolest part is is like you know we are family but to see the community get behind all that that was like every wow. every hole i mean i just looked around and was just like boom you know oh, yeah it was crazy and your immediate really family, cool. you mentioned your wife, Lori, she was there and, and several of your children were able to be there for all that. Yeah, sure God, she's all always in. there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, one thing, she's a mom. Yeah. Like Michael said, she's always there. Um, she's I, an angel for you. Up, I, I saw all those people in pink shirts and white shirts and I'm just, just, you know, the thought that all these people actually went out of the way to organize that, to go pick up the shirts, to put them on, to to talk with each other and tell them, you know, where we're going to meet and what time they're going. Like for all of them to make an effort like that for me, it's like, it's so humbling, man. It's, but it's so cool because there, there were people there that had never met each other, but had a, a connection like through me, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So um, you end up, at the end of 18 holes, you look at them and you're like, wow, they're speaking to them. They didn't have a clue who they were. Two hours ago, four hours ago, however long it took, felt like 12 hours. <laughs> you will always have a PGA Tour start to your name. Um, you know, how did it all happen? How did you learn about this, this opportunity, this sponsor exemption? Uh, did you oh, get a phone call? Yep, I was just sitting off at work. And the, the phone rang and the guy said, it's just in front of the Butterfield Bermuda Championship. And first thing I thought is, okay, cool. Well, this year I'll get free tickets. <laughs> because last year I had to pay. <laughs> so um, they said, look, man, we'd love to, to offer you a spot um, in the Bermuda Championship. And I was like, whoa, you know, it's like, how cool is that? So I absolutely, I said, yes, 100% one time. And then I called my boys in that I work with and let them know. And then I called my wife and told her, look, then I'm, I'm actually going to play. And um, it, it just went, went, went from there. But what a, what a cool day that was. Yes, absolutely. Oh, mildly. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian, how did you learn, you know, well, we're talking about learning some big things. That's uh, certainly a highlight. A low light would be when you found out about uh, this darn cancer. Um, mm -hmm. That was a couple of years ago, correct? Yeah, um, December 23rd, 2019. 
And did you just, were you not feeling well? Were you out golfing? Were you at Yeah, home? man, I was, I was just feeling a little bit weak. Um, my wife and I are going to the gym that morning. Um, I didn't feel like doing anything. Um, I went to work and I, I thought I had vertigo. So I asked one of the guys to take me um, to the hospital. I said, Lord, let me just go to the hospital and you come back, pick me up. And I went from there and they did that test. You know, one of my eyes were like, um, like, you know, boom, boom, boom. Like they weren't going smooth like they're supposed to. Um, next thing I know, bro, it was a, a, a CAT scan, an MRI, intensive care. Um, air ambulance to Leahy and surgery on Monday to remove a tumor in the in the back here. Um, so they got the tumor out and I figured, okay, well, cool, at least the tumor's gone. I'm good, they did a biopsy. And then Christmas Eve, Eve, um, they came and said, look, we've got, um, you know, some kind of ugly news, especially for Christmas, but I had stage four esophageal and stomach cancer. And I was like, what? And there's like, look, it's not a whole lot we could, we could do. Um, you know, the life expectancy of this is not uh, long anyway. Um, we're gonna, you know, send you back home and, and guess you, you could figure it out. And I had met somebody through um, the Bermuda Goodwill Golf Tournament, a, a program that we have here. He met me in Boston. He came up to say hello. Where he lives in Boston. He came. We went out for dinner. Like oh, I was kind of depressed, heading back home. And he was like, "Bro, I'm on the board of directors at Dana Farber. Let me get you an appointment for a second opinion." And um, I got that appointment. So they've been they've been treating me um, since, you know. Yes, and you've. Uh... You've already gone past what they were telling you with all the numbers. And, you know, I'm a big yeah. advocate of that's just yeah. the calendars. It's nothing, you know, yeah. your story is your story. And you, you know, it'll be, I believe, many more golf tournaments in your future. Sure. <laughs> Paige, it's because yeah. he's so stubborn. That's why. It's well, good. I tell you what, I, I, <laughs> my wife always said, you know what? Hey, this cancer, some sort of stubborn, but you are too. So we're locking, we're locking horns right now. I'm not moving and it's not moving. So good in your career uh, as a head pro and, you know, you've given countless lessons, celebrities to folks that live in Bermuda, folks that travel in and out of Bermuda um, and residents there. I feel like now you're on, you've already been elevated to this platform of providing all of us with some life lessons. What are some of the mm -hmm. things that you've been sharing lately and um, probably not even realizing, but some of the things you're, you know, that you like to share with others, either in a similar situation or perhaps just those of us day to day who are like, oh, this is a tough day. Don, you, you know what? Um, cancer and golf have so many similarities, believe it or not. Um, cancer, having cancer, being a cancer patient, you learn to adopt. Um, just like you learn to adopt in, in the golf courses, whether it's a a calm day, a windy day, it's rainy, the greens are fast. You learn to adapt to that, you know what I mean? And cancer's no different. You learn to adapt and say, hey, you know what? Today's, today's gonna be a bad day. I know it from the minute I wake up and you adapt to that. Um, I can't teach as much as I, I did before because I can't stand up for half an hour, 45 minutes. So what I do is I let you know Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to come down. I'll, I'll look at you for five minutes, but then I'm going to sit in the car, you know? So it's all about adapting really. Um, you, you, you get this disease and, and you learn to, you learn to live with it or you don't, you, you give up and accept it and say, Hey, it's, it, it's over. And it's just like golf. If it's raining, you could get to the third hole and you could say, Hey, I'm a quit. I'm going in. Or you could put your rain suit on and adapt, you know? So that's, that's the biggest thing I've, I've learned, you know? And I think a lot of people have, have learned as well that, um, you know, uh, just adapting to stuff is, it's, th that, that's key. I've, I've heard you have uh, live lucky is one of your mottos. Yeah, right here, see that? Live lucky. 
<laughs> Roll the dice. <laughs> Roll the <those> dice. <laughs> As you are, which is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Mike, uh, do you want to chime in on this one? Kind of, uh, Mike, you're still doing some, or you definitely are doing some performance coaching and, and whatnot. So I'm sure you could go uh, for a long time on some of these life lessons, and especially when it comes to sports. But what would you say, um, uh, following Brian on that, with some of our life lessons and motivating uh, folks out there? Yeah, you know, I mean, played golf for a long time, started a second career and am doing some life coaching, performance coaching. And, um, you know, just the few chats that I've had with Brian, being around him. I mean, he's always got this, he's always had this fight in him. So like, you know, people are, may say whatever they say, you know, he's lived past his expectancy. I'm like, <laughs> I'm always like, shoot, <laughs> he ain't even close. <laughs> oh, his fight, his desire, his, you know, just to bring joy to people's lives every single day. You know, yeah, you got dealt a, a crappy hand and but he always finds a sunshine in it. Like, I don't think it's ever rained on Brian. Not enough, <laughs> never bought and a I'll rain, you. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't have an umbrella. <laughs> um, but you know, that Thursday morning we woke up, I mean, it was pouring with rain, windy as could be. <laughs> and no lie, Paige, like an hour before we teed off, Stop. there were some dark clouds out there. <laughs> they didn't even come close to our group. <laughs> nope. it was nope. like they were just part and part in the seas um sure. so you know there's a lot of there's definitely a lot of cross between like between what i'm doing with performance coaching and and sitting there and watching brian i mean you know i get some clients they'll sit there and they'll say something and i go look i'm gonna show you something and i pull up a video of, of brian and i'm like you're you're worried about this little thing and we got this guy right here who's got this to worry about i'm like makes your problems seem pretty small just to give him some perspective too um because i think that's what it is right brian i mean it's it's perspective on a lot of different things sure um, and, and and i'll tell you what michael to be honest with you when when i go away to the hospital when i think i'm in bad shape bro <laughs> it's people out there in worse shape than me <laughs> you, you know what i mean and i feel yeah. for them but then it, it's somebody who is in better shape for, than me feeling for me, you know? But yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what, it's not, it, it's a hundred percent is putting it into perspective because, hey, all you need is one trip to Dana Farber and you'd be like, you, you, you're sitting there 54 years old. You lived a pretty good life and you, you are, you still are. And you see a little 10 year old walk across you with no hair on, um, you know, little pressed ears and, bold as could be at 10 years old like right it, it kind of like wakes you up a little bit you know yeah. like a lot of bit a lot of bit. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean it's it's yeah, it's ahead. sorry i mean it's just i mean just having that perspective i mean it's an interesting it's an interesting way to look at things too i mean it takes it sucks that it takes something like this to gain some perspective yeah. um or help you recognize it sometimes um but you know i mean you learn lessons along the way and and that's what that's what it's all about is like you said adapting always adapting but that's what we're yep. good at yep you know i'm sure you have lots of perspective uh, but i'm sure you also have some tough moments some moments um yeah that are tougher than others what what pulls you out of of those moments to get you back to where okay I'm, uh, I'm going to be all right. And yeah. everyone else is too. You know what? Love and love, love for life. Um, love for my family, uh, love for my friends. Um, I'm not ready to check out yet. You, you, you know what I mean? Um, my granny told me years ago, nothing will ever happen to me because heaven don't want me and how straight I'm going to take over. <laughs> so, so, um, I, you, you know what, just, just, just my zest, zest for life. I surround myself with so many positive people. 
Like I, I, there's no possible with, with me. I, I don't argue it anymore. I used to, I used to be pretty good at it too, <laughs> but um, I, 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 I don't, I don't argue. Nobody doesn't argue around me. You know, nobody doesn't complain around me because before they used to, you used to come to Brian and um, you know, spill yourself. But now it's like, no, I'm not gonna say nothing to him because you know, so it, it actually, it, it makes other people feel better. But I'll tell you what, um, when, when you have such a, a, a beautiful wife and kids and cousins and aunties and uncles and friends, it, it's a, hey, that, that's, that's, that inspires me. Like I, I have a tea time on Friday morning. So that, that's my goal, you know, tomorrow I'm going to rest. Um, it's a public holiday here, so I'll cool out. There's no need for me to go to work. And I'll look forward to Friday because um, I, I really want to see those guys. Um, and, and I know that for that four hours, I won't think of, of, of too much. We'll be laughing and, and having a good time. And um, I'm, I'm not sick at, at that point. I'm sick after, like I feel it, but hey, it's okay. I, I come home and I, I'll cool out. Get back at See, Paige, it. And, right. and Paige, yeah. that's the other thing is, is this whole process, I don't think I've ever heard him once complain about something to do with it. It's more like it's, it's always solution oriented or, you know, it's just something I have to deal with. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. And and you're never afraid to have a conversation about it either. I mean, mm -mm. you don't have to tiptoe no. around. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Here. You ask whatever you want. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think yeah. that's like a beautiful thing because that, I mean, that's scary. You know what I mean? Like for some people to come up to, to him and say something, I mean, sometimes people don't know what to say, but the most beautiful part is he almost invites it. And he's like, what Ask. you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, mate. Because I tell you what, um, when you get in this situation, I'm, I never thought, I never thought, I wish I would have learned from, from somebody, I wish I would have been brave enough to ask somebody, you know, how this stuff goes. My mother passed away from cancer. That was 30 odd years ago. And I remember bits and pieces, but hey, if 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 I can help you to 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 figure out something that might be going on with your mom or dad or nieces, nephews, cousins, whoever's sick in your family, I look, ask me because this has so many like ups and downs and wrong corners and stuff, man. It's it's something new, like every day, man. And I'm I'm so willing to to share and and let people know. Look, I'm I'm not sorry for myself. Maybe this is maybe this is why I'm got it for the simple fact that, hey, I can share my experience um, with other people, and maybe I can encourage other people. Maybe I can help other people. Maybe I can help them, like find solutions or um, whatnot. There's nothing that, that, that I don't know now about this cancer stuff. I mean, I didn't know anything about it before, but now, hey, if you need to know, please, I invite you to pick up your phone, WhatsApp me and, and ask a question because there's pains all over the place. Um, there's things that happen, I'll never forget. I was standing over a pot one day and I'm, I'm, I'm looking down and the next thing I know the golf ball is full of blood. I get these nosebleeds like out of nowhere. I thought I was going to see Jesus that day. When I, <laughs> seriously. I was like, oh my God, what is this? But if those things happen, like, but then I, then I figured it out that, hey, it comes as a side effect of this medication. And boom, so if somebody else that happens to, hey, if, if they can learn from me that, bro, it'll be over within a week just be cool, you'll be okay, then they job done, you know, because it's a, it's a serious battle um, by yourself and, and, and not knowing. But I feel that I've learned enough in the, in the last two years to, um, you know, to help ju just about anybody. And I'll tell you what, if, if I don't know, <clears throat> my wife knows because, and I'll tell you why, <laughs> when, I, when I get nurse doctor's appointments, he starts that, that, and, I'm thinking number four at Port Royal, <laughs> that T-shirt. I don't listen to nothing. I come out of their doctor's appointments and I don't have a clue what's wrong with me. And Lori has to tell me, she's like, okay, look, I got to take this and that and do this because I just zone out because 
it is what it is. I get those appointments and from she takes over for me. So, but <clears throat> that's just the way it is, you know. That's good. You're keeping it positive. You're on the golf yeah, course, even really. when the doctor's giving you some yeah. important information. <laughs> that's why I have to take somebody to those appointments with me because I don't listen. <laughs> You never yes. have. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and is it right you're trying to help some other families who are going through some of these things? You've done some fundraisers, and um, are there some of the some of those in the works? Uh, I'm sure over the next year. Um, you, you, know. you know what? I've, I've actually. Um, it's funny you ask that because I've just submitted my um, some papers uh, to start up. Um, a charity. I'm just waiting for them to approve it. Um, it's called the Brian Morris Golf 4, F-O-R-E, Cancer. So um, it'll be myself, Sherilyn Thompson, who's the president of Ocean View, my wife, Lori, a good friend of mine, Darren Lewis, and OJ Pitcher, who actually caddied for me. So what I'm going to do is and I'm going to start this charity and hopefully um, it'll encourage, it, it's it's aimed sp not specifically 100%, but towards the golfing community. Um, I've worked with the local golf courses to, to get a rate. Um, some guys can't play mid ocean, uh, la di da di da. So the charity is going to be able to fund them to go out with a foursome and, and play that golf course. Somebody might have a, a last wish to go to Myrtle Beach with, with their ace boys. Um, the charity. We'll, we'll be able to um, maybe fund some of it. Somebody might want to go watch the Bay Hill Invitational and see Tiger play. Maybe we could pay for their playing ticket and, and give them some tickets. Um, they might want to hit golf course up, up Ocean View. The charity will, will pay for the golf course, golf balls. Um, the, the thing is, this stuff becomes so expensive, Paige. You know, regardless if you have insurance or not, Every time I go to Boston, um, you know, I have to get COVID tests. That's three hundred dollars. A travel authorization. That's one hundred and fifty dollars. We gotta eat. We gotta rent a car. This this stuff gets so expensive, man. And unfortunately, the first thing you have to give up is golf because it's expensive, you know. But I've learned that golf is such a motivator and such an important part of getting through this that. Without it, I honestly believe I've, I've been going. I, I would have checked out. But if this charity has a few dollars in it where I could say, hey, you know what? You and your ace boys are going to Myrtle Beach. It's $1,000 to, to help you go ahead and, and enjoy it then. So so that's the purpose of the charity. All the papers are submitted. Um, once it gets approved, I'll launch it. Uh, we'll have a website for it and stuff. And we don't have to raise millions, you know, maybe we can, but at the, at the end of the day, um, I, I just want those people just to be cool with, with, with having the opportunity to play golf because it's, like I said, it's been so important to me. So that's what's on the, that, that's what's in, in the plan now. So I'm just waiting for approval. Hopefully that will happen within the next couple of weeks. Congratulations. Uh, that's awesome. Michael, Oops. I'm sure you're not surprised and uh, perhaps you'll be his executive director on staff that's of the charity. <laughs> yeah, it's my boy. I'll help, I'll help him out any way I can. That's for dang sure. Um, Brian, who are your role models? Uh, it would <laughs> ha have to be, honestly, um, my dad, when, when, when he was alive, um, my uncle Blip kind of took over. My dad's brother uh, kind of took over from from him. He it is so cool, man. He's such a cool cat. Um, it's he, he he lays down the law, but in a in a in a different way, a humble, like pretty cool way. It's, he was never to judge because, hey, I I I got reckless after I lost my parents. You know. Um, I was young, I was a teenager, so I, of course I expect that I made mistakes. Um, I did stupidity, but he he never judged me and I've never seen him argue. I've never heard him raise his voice. And um, if, if, if I could be like as, as cool as my, my uncle Blip, 
then hey, that's the job done of, of, of succeeding in life, is, in, in my opinion. And that's really all that, that matters, you know? And you gave up golf shortly after all that, that tough time, right? And you yeah, aside for a while. Yeah, I, I quit. I actually, when I threw all my stuff off the cliff out South Shore, because <laughs> I, I was just Your clubs? disgusted. Your clubs, shoes, golf balls, clothes, <laughs> everything. Threw them all overboard. Shum, on. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't know golf any other way. It was just, you know, I, I knew golf through my dad. He taught me. Um, I used to go go play with him. And it, it was it just wasn't the same. I, I went, I tried to play after after he died, but it I never enjoyed it. It didn't feel right. It felt odd. Um, it felt like I wasn't supposed to be there. I guess maybe I felt guilty because he had died and I was still being able to play golf. Um, so yeah, I was disgusted and I quit. But looking back on it, you know, it was probably the best thing that, that happened to me because I was I was reckless, I was immature. Um, Bermuda only has nine golf courses. I would have worked at nine of them and burnt all my bridges. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I would have got fired from every single one of them, guarantee it. And who knows what I'll be doing today. So I honestly think that, yeah, it was, it was a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't have done it, but I know now that I wasn't ready then. I wasn't ready to be a golf pro. And I wasn't ready to, to, to get into the golf business. So um, hey, the Lord had a plan for me. And he let me wait 10 years. And I was 32. Um, I went play a golf with a buddy of mine. Um, I chipped in on the second hole. And here I am. <laughs> that's, that's it. I went back to school. I went to work for um, a, a, a really cool guy, a mutual friend of Michael and I's, um, Kevin Petty. And he actually bought the golf course and um, he was going to redo it. He was going to lay everybody off. And he said, Brian, um, he had a meeting with me on his side. He said, Brian, I, I can't let you go. Um, I need you to stay for a year. And I was like, huh? What well, you got to keep me for? You just let the other 15 people go. And he said, man, your father uh, used to pick me up every single morning during the summer. They used to deliver candy um, for a local candy company. And this guy who bought the golf course was my father's helper on the candy truck. And he was <laughs> like, yeah, your dad was so cool. Like, I, 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 can't, I can't fire you. I can't get rid of you. I can't lay you off. So I proposed to him that, hey, look, Ronan, we go to school and if I don't, gra I'll go to school and if I don't graduate, I'll pay you back. If I do graduate, I'll work for you for 10 years. And um, he thought it was a brilliant idea. And so sad, so done. Here we go. What a story, my goodness. And now you're yeah. out there, you, you know, you, you play with purpose and you play it right. And um, you're certainly um, spreading the good word. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's yes. pretty cool. Pretty cool. And yeah. uh, Sims by your side there. Um, Michael, I must say, is a St. Andrews School grad from Boca Raton, as am I. And uh, he went on to play at, at URI and has been rolling right along. It's so good to see you guys um, out there. This is how, you know, I actually saw Michael's post and the picture of you two out there at the Butterfield, you know, at the championship in Bermuda. And I just, I paused. I remember seeing, oh my, you know, and then your story was just on the Golf Channel and Golf Digest and, and sure. it, you know, and, um, certainly inspirational, even for folks who aren't golfers. And so I'm so yeah. happy you were able to share some of that with us. Yeah, man. I, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful as, as well. You know, it's um, so grateful for, for Small Mercies and it's through, through your podcast um, with, with Michael, whoever hears, like, just, hey, don't, don't give up, man. It's not all doom and gloom. There's still a lot of happiness left in life. Yet there's gonna be bad times. There's gonna be real ugly periods of, of your life. But I'll tell you what, they don't, they don't last long. And I believe that hey, you, you're not, you don't know how strong you are to being strong is your only option, you know? And we, we can all get through this. And if you could get through it with some pretty solid people, like I said, my family and Michael, 
as of today, you are part of my family page. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is. That's how I accept you. And um, I'm thankful for, for, you know, for you for having me and Mike on today. It's really nice of you. Well, what an honor. Sister or cousin? <laughs> Which one am I? Sister. Ah, uh, I will take it. <laughs> I will take it. One, I will love it. I love it. So how can people connect with you um, who are listening and, and want to become your brother or sister as well? Yeah. <laughs> Where can they find you? You go, you think anybody could find me at, um, at Ocean View at, at, at the golf course. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's Bermuda, man. It's not hard to, yep. to get in contact with me. It's only a few people here. <laughs> what about any you know, do you you know work on any social media or uh, no i don't nothing? i don't no i don't have nothing i'm so lame that's okay <laughs> you can bug uh, you know? michael <laughs> how about you sims any way we can reach you well yeah you can get through through me through michael Pop there you go <laughs> <laughs> i love it yes. um, or me because yes, now i'm, yes, so I'm yes. happy to help i would or love to connect you got you yes <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, you can always, I mean, shoot, how can you contact me? You can contact me through uh, Michael at rocksports.group. Um, that's the management group that I work with uh, for my performance coaching and, and things. Um, and I'm happy to get in, get you in touch with Brian, Good. Ms. Page here. Um, yeah, I mean, just keep spreading the word. That's right. Teamwork. You know, I'll put it. Yes. Work is dream work. Yeah, that's right. Through my website and we'll make it all happen no matter what. Cool. Beautiful. Yes. So, Brian, Michael, thank you so much. We will meet again. Uh, we're going to chat after your next PGA Tour events, both of you. Sure. All right. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Sounds cool with me. Okay, I'm ready. So there's a promise. And yeah. uh, my friends, just if you could follow this podcast, today's page, please review, share, like, and follow. I'm also on Instagram at Paige Cornblue. I always say page with an I and Cornblue with a K and also pagecornblue.com. Get out there on those greens, everybody. Enjoy your day, and until next time, cheers.